Good morning. Welcome back into Wake Up America. So former President Donald Trump has until next Friday, August the 25th, to surrender to the Fulton County, Georgia courthouse. Uh, that's where we find senior Newsmax correspondent John Huddy with the very latest. John, good morning. We just had Alina Haba on this morning. She's one of Trump's attorneys. She said maybe next Friday, but right. maybe not. What's the scene like down there? What are you hearing? Yeah, well, it's, uh, I mean, what we're hearing is that more than likely the defendants, all 19, are going to, mo you know, uh, submit motions for dismissal or at least to try to get the case moved out of Fulton County. That's what uh, former President Trump's chief of staff, uh, Mark Meadows, is trying to do right now. We know that his legal team filed a 14-page uh, motion yesterday to get the, the case, his case, and the charges against him moved to U.S. District Court, basically citing federal law, uh, contending that, uh, that under that removal of any civil actions or criminal, criminal prosecutions in state courts should be moved to federal court since he was at the time uh, working uh, in an official capacity for the United States government. That's something that Rudy Giuliani also brought up yesterday, arguing that instead of the case being in state court, it should be moved also to federal court as well under federal court guidelines. So expect uh, not only, you know, motions across the board from all 19 defendants for that to happen, but as I said, also a motion to dismiss. This is going to be challenged, you know, the charges, which include, as we talked about extensively yesterday, the RICO charges, racketeering, obstruction of justice, falsifying records, forgery, among others. So it's at a pretty extraordinary case. Uh, speaking of Rudy, Rudy Giuliani, remember he was U.S. attorney in New York and really uh, became famous for going after the mafia there on those RICO charges. And now he himself, along with the others, including former President Trump, are facing those charges as well. As far as the scene out here, the road is back open outside the Fulton County Courthouse. Really, it's just media at this point. Yesterday, we saw a much heightened security presence. And before, you know, former President Trump comes here, obviously, there's going to have to be the coordination between the Secret Service and local law enforcement as well. That was the case in the other three arraignments for those three federal indictments. Uh, keep in mind, I was with the motorcade for the first federal indictment in Miami, uh, in the federal court in downtown Miami. I rode with the motorcade, and they shut down roads. They shut down the freeway, I-95. They shut down most of the roads around the courthouse. So expect something like that again, not to mention cameras here in Georgia are allowed in the courtroom, and also the Fulton County Sheriff Pat Labatt said that the former president would, like anyone else, have his mugshot taken. So we're waiting on more information about uh, you know, when those arraignments are going to happen. Oh, That's interesting. It. So this one's going to be different from the previous three for sure. John, just a quick follow-up. You've been down there a couple days. Local news, sure. is this the biggest story in Atlanta, Georgia right now, or, or are they, you know, are they covering other stuff as well? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're covering other stuff as well, but but this has led to headlines for sure. I and mean, yeah. it was wall-to-wall -wall coverage yesterday about it, not only locally, but nationally as well. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if that'll help or hurt Trump. I saw the front page of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution yesterday. Going to be interesting for sure. John Huddy, thank you. We appreciate it. Definitely. All right. I uh, want to welcome in Trump attorney uh, Lindsay Halligan now for reaction to everything we just heard. Yeah, Lindsay, thanks for joining us. So, John, how do you just to kind of walked us through, uh, you know, what could happen? He will get a mug shot. Uh, that's what they're saying. Uh, cameras in the courtroom. So very different this case from the others. Kind of walk us walk us through um, as far as the charges, too. Uh, do you think that this is the most serious case against former President Trump? Well, so just to follow up on the removal issue, this case uh, should be removed. This indictment is exactly the type of state interference in a federal official's duty that the supremacy clause of the United States Constitution prohibits. Uh, if the case is removed, then there to federal court, there will not be cameras in the courtroom. But Miss um, Willis seems to want this case to be televised. And uh, I'm sure she's very proud of herself, but let's remember how easy it is to indict someone. So this indictment doesn't mean a conviction. It's not a crime to contest an election. So here we have an, yet another prosecutor exercising her artistic license to aggressively and creatively apply the RICO statute to President Trump and his alleged co-conspirators. And, you know, legislative intent when drafting laws matters, and none of the laws uh, President Trump is charged with in these four indictments were drafted with the intent to charge the offenses that he is being charged with. Yeah. Uh, so, Lindsay, just to be clear, and, and you know, you're, you're one of 
the former president's attorneys, would a motion to get this thing kicked out of the state of, uh, uh, or, or Fulton County, would that happen before the president reports to, to uh, the Fulton County courthouse he's got until next Friday? Or would, that, would we see this appearance, the mugshot and the whole thing, and then you'd file that motion? Uh, I'm not sure what the attorneys are, when the attorneys are going to file it, they can file it now if they want. They can wait until after uh, he, he surrenders. Uh, but th these prosecutors are going to keep going too far until they really make a big mistake that exposes their motives. These judges want to take away the president, President Trump's right to attorney-client privilege. Well, the pendulum will swing back at some point, and these prosecutors' conversations with each other uh, that they think are privileged will be exposed one day for everyone to see uh, how politically motivated these indictments really are. Lindsay, state, is stating publicly that we need to have a recount, is that against the law? Because there's something there called the First Amendment. Well, when you have prosecutors that are exercising artistic license with laws, uh, you're you're stuck with an indictment like we're witnessing now. You know she had 30 months to prosecute and is now demanding a trial within six months during election time. What a coincidence! And I know in another yeah. case in Fulton County, another RICO case that she's bringing, uh, jury selection began on January 4th with 14 defendants. It's been eight months and jury selection hasn't even been finalized. So the fact that she got up there and said that this case with 19 defendants will be tried in six months mm -hmm. is laughable to anyone that practices law. And the judge should really uh, admonish her for, for saying that and misrepresenting to the world uh, how quickly a trial of this nature can uh, okay. proceed. So, so your contention is that, that Fannie Willis, her, she wants to fast track these to try and get a guilty conviction. You think that's political? That's the contention? Well, yeah, I think okay. that I think that she has her own political aspirations. She just released a fundraising email, I think, last week. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, she's a very ambitious woman. Uh, but yeah, there's no there's no way that this case will be tried in six months. Okay. No yeah. way. Lindsay Halligan, we appreciate you being with us. We appreciate the perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Um,